What's up guys, my name is Ace, and we finally have the official campaign reveal for Black Ops Cold War. And today, I've got some extra information to bring you guys that wasn't revealed in this trailer or in the live event for Warzone, because last week I was fortunate enough to attend a live stream hosted by Activision. They invited some of us content creators out to watch this live stream, and it was basically just a presentation for about an hour or hour and a half or so where they went through a bunch of the campaign details. We got to see little bits and pieces of various campaign missions, and of course, we did get to see the trailer early. So in today's video, I want to share a bunch of the unique information that I got from that live stream last week that you wouldn't have gotten from just seeing this trailer or going through the Warzone live event. So let's just hop right into it. Black Ops Cold War is a direct sequel to Black Ops 1. This isn't like Modern Warfare 2019 where it's a reboot of the original. This is actually a direct sequel to Black Ops 1 and it takes place in the early 80s, about 1981. And with this of course we are going to be seeing some familiar faces like Woods, Hudson, as well as Mason. But on top of this, we have three other key characters that are going to be joining. And the first one is Adler, who is a big part of the trailer. You can see him there. He's the guy that kind of looks like Robert Redford a little bit. And he is a CIA agent. But on top of that, we're also going to have characters called Park and Sims. But we don't have too much background on those ones. Now, something that's very unique to Call of Duty, at least, that they're doing with the campaign is when you first get into the game, you will actually be able to create your own character. So you can pick at least generally what your character is going to look like. I don't know how detailed the customization options are going to be as far as appearance goes. But you can at least make some choices to pick your character as you go through. And with this, the most interesting part is you also select a psych profile. So an example of this is you can choose to be loyal and reliable, or you could be unstable and have violent tendencies. And apparently, according to the presentation, this is going to affect how your character may react to certain situations in the campaign itself. And also, it looks like it's going to give you little boosts or little quirks in gameplay itself. And I can't remember all the ones that I saw exactly on screen. We weren't allowed to record that event, so I couldn't go back and just check that out. But... I believe there was something like you reload faster or just like little perks like that that tie into your psych profile. So that's a pretty unique aspect of the campaign. Next up, going along with this in the campaign, there are going to be some interactive narrative scenes. So you'll actually be able to select what your character says in response to the situation. And this is super basic for many games out there. This isn't like a revolutionary thing in the games industry, but this isn't something that you normally have an option to do in Call of Duty. So it allows you to sort of shape your experience at least a little bit. And on that note, there are multiple endings to this campaign. And also choices that you make even early on in the campaign will end up showing up as you get toward the end of the campaign. They said they were really trying to aim to make it feel like your choices matter and have an impact on the outcome of the campaign, which is very interesting. Now, having said that, I wouldn't expect that there's going to be like a dozen campaign endings or anything. There's probably only going to be like three or four, maybe only two. I don't really know. They didn't give us an exact number on that. But in either case, there are multiple endings for this. On top of this, we have our standard main missions in the main storyline. They've also introduced side missions, and these side missions will be directly tied to the storyline, but they will be optional. And the way that you access these side missions is you have to find intel on the map. So just like we normally have with Call of Duty campaigns, if you search around a little bit on the maps as you're going through, you will find intel. And this time that intel will be important because it actually unlocks these side missions, which I think is awesome. On top of this, another thing that's unique is various missions throughout the campaign, not all of them, but several of them at least, will be a lot more open and there will be room to make decisions for yourself. It's not going to be as on the rails as a traditional Call of Duty campaign where it basically tells you exactly where to go and then you just shoot bad guys and then go to the next checkpoint and shoot more bad guys. There will be some situations where it puts you into an environment and it's up to you to get from point A to point B and there are various ways that you can do that. One example we saw was it looked like it was inside like a KGB headquarters, for instance, and you had different options to like go guns blazing, for instance, or you could poison somebody. We didn't get all the context to that, but you definitely had various choices that you could make in order to complete that mission. And there was room to roam around a little bit and choose your own path, which I thought was really neat. And those are sort of the main things that stood out with the presentation about the campaign last week. On top of this, like I said, they did walk us through a few of the campaign missions, not all the way through. We just got to see like little clips and bits and pieces of various campaign missions. 
And just as an example, one that I really liked that I thought was really neat is you're infiltrating a training area for Russian troops or KGB troops. And this is an entire area that was built to be an American town. It was built to look like an American town, but it was just a training facility so that the KGB agents could train in an America-like environment. And it looks like you infiltrate in the middle of a training session and you start lighting these people up that think they're just training against silhouettes, which I think is a pretty cool concept. Now, as far as some of the details that I saw, this game is definitely running on the newly updated engine that was used for Modern Warfare. However, it's got a bit of a twist to it, looks like. It looks like Treyarch and Raven have really put their own touches on this, especially when it comes to animations. You can really see as the character reloads, for instance, as well as the aim down sight and everything, it's much more Treyarch-like. Things seem to be much snappier. Aim down sight times seem to be very fast based on what I saw. So while it looks incredible like Modern Warfare does, it definitely has a certain Treyarch feel to it, as far as I could tell with the actual gameplay that I saw. I didn't get to play it myself, but you can sort of see that stuff as you watch somebody actually play it. Additionally, they did a whole presentation on lighting, so it seems like they actually updated the lighting from Modern Warfare even. So it's actually a step up from Modern Warfare when it comes to how they're lighting things. And this is likely in preparation for the next-gen consoles, which a huge selling point for those is going to be ray tracing and everything that goes along with that. So I believe that's why they made the big upgrades to the lighting system for this upcoming Call of Duty game. Now, just a couple other things. They brought back the writer from Black Ops 1. His name's David Goyer. He's the one that wrote the story for Black Ops 1. They brought him back to do the story for Black Ops Cold War, which is great news because Black Ops 1 had one of the best stories out of all of the Call of Duty franchise, in my opinion. And it looks like there's going to be lots of twists and turns and some crazy psychological stuff going on throughout this campaign as well. There's even one mission that we got to see little bits and pieces of that blew my mind a little bit. Uh, this looks like a flashback scene to Vietnam, and it gets pretty crazy. Obviously, some crazy psychological twists going on in that. And we just saw a little glimpse of that in this trailer. Additionally, some really good news that we got out of this presentation is it looks like the majority of the campaign was handled by Raven, with, of course, a lot of overlap with Treyarch. And while we don't have any information and there isn't a reveal for multiplayer yet, it looks like that was Treyarch's main focus, which is very exciting to see. Now, we will, of course, get the big multiplayer reveal on September 9th, and I'm really looking forward to that one, even more so than the campaign reveal. As cool as campaigns are, multiplayer is what really excites me. And then as far as zombies goes, I would expect to see that last out of the reveals. But with that, that's pretty much it. That's going to wrap it up for today's video on the big reveal for Black Ops Cold War. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what are you guys thinking about this trailer as well as the live event that they had in Warzone? Did you really like how they handled this live event and the trailer and everything? Or would you prefer if they took a different route? Just let me know those thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.